stage one of the Giro d'Italia. We're on our way to the start. Today's a real tricky one, like possibly the trickiest stage of the race, working out how it's going to go, what's going to happen. Pretty dull stage, oh, dull is the wrong word, a stage where not much is going to happen right up until the end, where everything's going to happen. And we rode the climb two days ago and it's it's like it's a wide road possibly a headwind a gradual gradient so if there's like a dream climb to get over it's that it's going to be about an eight minute effort i think the question is who's going to win at the top obviously there's a lot of eyes on van der Poel. guys like diego usili um magnus court nielsen all of those in the mix just full-blown climbers almeida elisi elisi or sue silly you sure yeah i'm sure Diego Alisi, and then just full-blown climbers, Almeida, Miguel Angelo, Angel Lopez, Valverde, and then there's like Caleb Ewan and Giacomo and Damar. And when there's a pink jersey on the line, everyone's gonna fight that bit harder. Like everyone, everyone on day one of any race fancies their chances. On day one of a Grand Tour, like really. Now for me and Matias, it's different because Tomorrow is the TT, and at the moment, and I can tell you this now because this isn't going out until after the TT, at the moment it looks like there'll be the stronger tailwind for the early starters, so the incentive is for me and Matthias yeah. to finish near the back. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and like, we can do that. We can finish last. Yeah. Specialists. They're specialists. Yeah, yeah, we make a couple of this. If it was the other way around, I doubt you'd be as optimistic about this plan. <laughs> yeah. You'd be looking for excuses. Yeah, late, but, late starts are good. You need to yeah. you need to finish top ten. What? You wouldn't be so optimistic. <laughs> Genthe is the designated climber of the day <laughs> to look after Giacomo on the slopes. And uh, Giacomo's getting in the zone. So we'll let you know how it goes. Roberto, thoughts and feelings ahead of stage one? Quite relaxed at the moment. Yeah. Uh, I think in a few hours it's going to be good. It's the last time you're going to be relaxed for the next three weeks. Yeah, looks like it. <laughs> On a scale of one to ten, how would you rate your performance today? Yeah, but I rate my teammates. Okay. Which one specifically? Not naming names. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> no, I say we were solid. Eights across the board. Seven yeah. to eights. Yeah. Matthias. <laughs> oh, eight, six. No, no, no. <laughs> Matthias stepped up today. I think. Matthias is good. I think the shapes arrived. Yeah. Just in time, really. Yeah. Tell me, one day I will come. <laughs> wait, I'm waiting the moment when you call me, hey, Matthias, please wait for me, please. Wait. Yeah, yeah, well, it happens every and year. Right? Help, help me make the time count. Yeah, yeah. And I'll be there again. Oh, yeah. In the word, words of the great friends, I'll be there for you. I'll be there for you. I don't know the rest of it. It was a dull day, wasn't it? Scenery was pleasant. We, yeah, we, we kind of muscled our way with Giacomo in a well position on the climb and then unfortunately Giacomo got held up behind a crash. But more importantly, the intermediate point situation, there was a sprint, there was two guys up the road and so there was quite a lot of intermediate points up for grabs and we grabbed the maximum amount we, we could. So today was a win. Matthias and I lost a bucket load of time so that we could start tomorrow early. Uh, most weather reports say it's a dropping tailwind throughout the afternoon. One weather report says it's going to rain on us and nobody else, so, but we went with the majority, which is the dropping tailwind. So yeah, tomorrow we'll do recon in the morning and then a nice early race and hopefully one of us is on the hot seat for a while. It'd be nice, wouldn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. We've got, both got new handlebars from Champion. 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 Friend, friend of mine. Friend of Matthias. They're pretty slick. They're very... Very cool. You can do full custom, but I was just like, you know what? I like Matthias's bars. I would like them. So my bars are custom for Matthias. Yeah. But I like them as well. Time trials in this year are not great, are they? Ha, this year not snow, not really. Even, even tomorrow, like the uh, first 8k looked look quite okay, but yeah. the last one, 1.2k, mm. and then steep ramp. 
will be about uh, having good climbing legs. And at the moment, Alex, you're going pretty well, so I think uh, maybe you may stay along all right. It's, it's, poss it's possible. And then the last, but the last TT in Verona, I mean, there, there I think I can beat you. Because my shape is rising always during the rain tour, your shape is going down. So right. This means in the last TT I can go 1-1. One, one. Place your bets, folks. Place your bets. <laughs> We have exactly the same equipment. Like there is no fairer race than this. Although we'll both find it. We're the same Formula One. It's got to beat your team. Yeah, yeah it just got to be. Yeah, that, Time that's uh, is the Formula One. It's yeah, like, it's like yeah. Russell. You're just racing your teammates. Lewis Hamilton, George Russell. Oh, at the moment, that's not. Oh, in fact, the bikes are more like the Red Bulls of Ferraris. Oh, right, right now, yeah, yeah, I'd agree with that. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, not much more to report really. TT day. Activity of what as well. Yeah, the most aggressive rider. <laughs> God, what a day, Rick. What a day. I mean, how do you improve from this? How yeah. do you go up from this? Just try to reach from Mount Etna, that's how. A little bit much for me right now. <laughs> a funny story last time Rick was in the King of the Mountains jersey, which is quite a common occurrence at Grand Tours, for example, which is a surprising sentence to be saying. His washing got stolen in Sicily two years ago, so Rick lost the, uh, the race jersey. You kept the podium jersey, right? You lost the race jersey two years ago. The plan is to not lose the washing this time around. It's a pretty nice uh, haul of kit. Got a gabber jacket, got a arm warmers, gilet, it's got a helmet, and he's got glasses as well. Yeah, the whole, everything. So the team was prepared? Well, it, yeah. And we are here with the Splinters, the Splinters team. Yeah, but we're also here with Zabu, who's a member, he's a King of the Mountains yeah. in Grand Tour, specifically Giro specialist. It should be in his Instagram bio. Giro King of the Mountains jersey specialist. And then we got Dema, who's the third week specialist. So, yeah, sprint day. There were three points available for the fourth category. Pascal Aincourt, who was in second position in the King of the Mountains standings. Rick Zabel, supposedly ready for a lead-out role for Giacomo Nizzolo, would go after him to kind of keep the jersey. The official King of the Mountain. It's funny because I think I did my second best minute of my career. 780 watts to just realize after that I didn't need to do it because the guy, Pascal Aincourt, who in the end beat me, was anyway behind me in GC. So I just could have followed him also. Afterwards, you're always more clever, you say yeah. in Germany. <laughs> so I keep the jersey. That's nice. Unfortunately, I killed myself, so I could not help in the leader anymore. It was not so nice. You I know, will learn from my mistakes. You know, today was a learning day. Yeah. And we've still come away from it with a leader's jersey and a grand tour. So <laughs> it'd be easy to say today was not successful. But it'd also be easy today to say that today was successful. Yeah, maybe in a suitcase if we've or in the, the bike, the bike plate, maybe. Can we just leave it on the bus that now stays for Tor Hungary as motivation that they need yeah. to do something? Yeah. <laughs> I will I will figure out on that. <laughs> or if it doesn't go well, maybe they'll just drink it. So yeah, mistakes were made today. It was a real um, learning day. We were a bit too much. A bit too in front, a bit too early. Big old debrief on the bus. And you know, it really was a learning day. I made a mistake that I have never made in my whole career. I looked at the 3K to go banner and I thought it said two. So I did a big effort. And then when I came up to the 2K to go banner and didn't see a, a one on it or a little red flag, my heart sunk. I was like, Alex, you've really, really messed this up, Alex. Well done. Yeah, we just, it just wasn't good and it's the, f it's the first proper sprint, so it will be better next time. And then in the third week, we have- The specialist. <laughs> the specialist. Travel day tomorrow and a rest day. 
There's three flights. This is where teams start getting quite unhappy, actually. There's three flights. We lucked out and got the latest flight, which means we leave the hotel at a sensible 8 a.m. I know there's one flight that leaves at 7 a.m., like the, the plane actually leaves. So whoever's on that is going to be very disgruntled because that is a very early start. And that, that is where teams get quite unhappy because it's not fair treatment across the board. But in this instance, we got a good treatment, so you won't be hearing any complaints from us. Not one bit, but I'm sure, you know, there's still still 18 stages to go so there's plenty more time to find complaints about all sorts of things in this race but what is just a quick a closing note for this video two years ago we had some absurdly long mountainous stages and then there was a protest if you'll remember where we just didn't start the stage uh, because it was 263 kilometers tipping it down with rain and the riders just didn't start and there were very mixed opinions online over what we should or shouldn't have done but I can tell you from experience that the Gruppetto was having consecutive seven hour days which I've never experienced in my career that long flat stage was like the, the breaking point for the peloton there was obviously some massive clashes afterwards we were told that as riders we were going to pay for our actions and all that and well no riders paid anything for any kind of actions sensible length stages in this year's era not many stages over 200 and if they are they're only like five or ten over so i'd like to think that lessons have been learned from from that year um but yeah anyway rest and travel day and then we go to Sicily and we visit Mount Etna.